Welcome guys to another Eye of Terror Battle Reports. As you know, I'm your channel host Adam and today I got Scary from Scarcast. Scar. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah, got it right. Uh, Scarcast. I know. <laughs> I'm always like is it scared cast or scar is scar? Both, cuz you should be scared. You should I, I am scared. <laughs> Anytime I played this guy in regular 40k, I had my my butt handed to me here. Yeah, if so, you watch the first report, I got slaughtered. That's true actually. That was that's Absolutely good. Slaughtered. So, this is report number 2 of our Shadow War campaign that uh, we're doing. That's right. And so what we're doing is a narrative sort of campaign on the planet of uh, Well, it's Cadia. Cadia. Yeah. Kazervarn is, Kazer is the name of the, the fortress. Okay. Uh, we're playing on this really cool board yep. that was done for a games day. Yeah. And uh, it's it's been really fun so far. So I'm really looking forward to showcasing the cool awesome. games day board, yep. cool painted miniatures, That's showcasing awesome. the rules, following the characters as they develop or get the yeah. shit kicked out of them. <laughs> like the last game. Like the last game. Which, if you guys haven't seen the last game yet, make sure you check the link below before watching this one because there is a lead up to it. We are following and using the exact same armies that we used in the first battle over on Scarcast. So this game two, you've got a couple of developments, new recruits, yep. some new gear. Well, you got a new recruit. I, I didn't. I just got a new gun. More DACA if I was an Auric. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's, uh, let's show them the teams, show them the board, and we'll get right into the mission Absolutely. from there. Stay tuned, guys. Enjoy it. All we know is there's going to be destruction, lots devastation. Of, lots of death. And just, no. it's going to be great. Shadow War, here we go. <laughs> this is the kill team that we're using for, or my kill team that I'm using for this campaign. Uh, it is my strike team Regalis, uh, which is basically these three right here. Uh, we got Justicar and Seer right in the center there. So he has a Nemesis Force Halberd, a Storm Bolter with Psy Bolts. He has Power Armor. He has a Psychic Powers Hammer Hand and Purge Soul, and then he has a skill, Step Aside, which gives him a 4 plus and vulnerable save in melee combat. Off to his left is Brother Caldez. Uh, he is one of the specialists for the Grey Knights, so he is a Grey Knight Gunner. Uh, he has Power Armor, a Psy Cannon, then Hammer Hand, and Astral Aim. And then uh, my other character over here is Eltios, or Brother Eltios. He is the other gunner that I bought uh, and started with in this uh, campaign. He has a Nemesis Force Sword, a Psy Cannon, Power Armor, then the Psychic Powers, Hammer Hand, and Astral Aim. So uh, the upgrades that I did give, uh, like I said, Step Side was given to that uh, to the uh, Justicar uh, Nasir in the last match. And then over here with Brother Eltios, I used one of my four Promethean that I had from winning the game and uh, spent 200 points on buying equipment. So. Uh, Sorry, uh, Nasir got frag grenades and we got the side cannon on LTO. So I'll show you Skari's team next. And this here is the Dark Eldar. Uh, That's right. The witch cult. What is is there a name it's for a, it? It's witch cult. The, yeah. the cult of the bloodied blade. The cult of the bloody blade. All right. So, okay. uh, Scary, why don't you walk us through what you're playing? Absolutely. So we have a witch leader. She's a siren. Right there. Uh, she has a power sword and a mirror helm. Okay. Which allows me to double parry, which is pretty cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Very that. good. Um, then we've got three witches. One with okay. a venomed blade and two with chain hooks with venom. Okay. Um, these two here. That's a blood bride. With with a shard net and impaler, and this is a new recruit with a pistol and, an, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a knife. Yep. Then we have the two casualties from last game that are missing the next match. This We've, one here, This thankfully. one right here, I know. Uh, this, this girl here, she is uh, frenzied, uh, yep. so she's got hit in the head and she's pretty crazy right now. And then we have this girl here, or guy actually, yeah, um, that is has hatred for your Justicar, Justicar for slaying. Oh man, no matter of action, so, took her out of action in combat, kicked her while she was down, uh, that's and awesome. that was that. So all in all, my kill team's bigger, but definitely doesn't have as powerful shooting as yours. No, and the shooting is what really helped me win Absolutely. the last match. Definitely, so, I broke. I just, I yeah. just routed. Yeah, with shooting, and, it was and my Justicar was the only one that got in combat. I there, know, so. it, was, it was awesome. All right, we'll show you the board next that we are playing on. We'll get right into the action from there. This here is the board that we are playing on. It is a little bit narrower than the 4x4, but that is quite okay. So what it is, is the outside of the Obsidian Gates. So Strike Team Regalis has pushed out the Cult of the Bloody Blades out to the outer walls down here. And so we have our walkways, our Promethean pipelines, some ruins, some refineries, bunkers, and stuff like that. So that is the area that we are playing on. We'll come back with deployment next. 
So the mission for today's match is the raid. Uh, it's basically attacker defender uh, style deployment, and so to determine who has the who's the attacker defender, you got to roll off whoever has the highest is the attacker. Perfect. So here's the rolls. I got a two. Two. I got a four. So that means the Del whoever scores higher is the attacker. Dark Eldar is the attacker. They're for this trying to mission. find an additional way back into the building. Back into Kazervarn. That's right. So we'll come back with deployment next. <laughs> so for this mission, also we needed a secret entrance back into the uh, city that the Dark Eldar are trying to find. So that's the Obsidian Gate, and down here you see this little objective marker there. Uh, that is going to be the entrance into the sewers and tunnels below the city, below Khazar Varn, so that the Dark Eldar can re-infiltrate back in, so they can find their webway portal. So as I'm the defender, I have to uh, deploy D6 sentries uh, anywhere on the board, outside of 8 inches from a table side. So I get 6, but I only have 3, so all 3 of my guys will be on the board. And Skari here needs to also roll a D6 and this will determine how many attackers he has coming on the board. Okay, so I roll a d6. And, and so he has five. five. So I can bring five, six fighters to the game, which means my entire Tire kill team will man. come on. So both kill teams are at full strength. Minus your two, I guess, wounded, but. Yeah, but full strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They so full strength in terms of available. Available guys, guys <laughs> yes. <laughs> Four. Yeah, no, it's all good. For my deployment here, I had to uh, deploy all my guys within eight inches, or outside of eight inches of the board edge. So we have Justicar Nasir over here uh, on the ground level searching for enemy Dark Eldars. Then we have uh, Brother Keldez up on the top walkways there, and then Brother Eltiez. LTO, sorry, down at the bottom of that destroyed bunker there, all sort of encircling the center objective there. And we'll come back with Skari's deployment next. So for Skari's deployment, uh, we have to determine random board edges as to where they set up within eight inches, is it? Mm -hmm. or, and so we're just gonna do one, two on that board edge, three, four on this long board edge, and then five, six on that one over there. He's not gonna use the far board edge over there, which is the city walls, because they were pushed out. Oh, it yeah. doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> so this is his first model. So six. six, so it's gonna be setting up over on that side there. And Scarius' deployment is such, he has three of his uh, models here. So you have a... Debutante. Uh, and then two witches. Yep. And then over here. Witch. Yep. Blood Bride. Leader. And leader. That's a deadly squad right there. So, attackers have initiative. The, go first. And uh, goes first, yeah. so we'll come back with the movement next. Okay. So Scarry here is going to start off moving his Blood Bride, Witch, and Leader there. Yep, so my Leader is essentially just going to go charge. straight for charge. Charging is into Eltios right there. Yeah, you know, risky proposition because yep. of the fact that if you survive, you'll, you'll sound the alarm. Yep. But I need to make sure that, um, that I get into a position where... I, I'd knock one of your side cannons out. Absolutely, because they are the ones that are going to do a ton of damage to you. Correct. And the <laughs> other thing about sounding the alarm is that if I do survive, it's a it equal. To, I have to roll after no, no, the combat. If, if he survives, he it's automatically, automatically. If he goes down, the that's noise right. of the combat might even set off yeah. the alarm and alert the other sentries because they're trying to be stealthy. But, that's right. Yeah. And so what happens is equal to the number of people that charge into the Grey Knight, mm -hmm. uh, well, into Eltios, will be the number I have to roll below that. So if he charges with two, I have to roll a two or a one to sound the alarm. That's right. If uh, he d does go down. Now if I shoot as well, yeah. it will set off the alarm That's with right. any like, strong weapons or whatever. That's so, right. Yeah. So we'll finish off Skari's movement next. Um, okay, so this guy, this yeah, witch, the here witch is going to move. Um, she's actually going to do something like this. Ooh, getting right into the objective over there. Or well, close she to. needs to, right? That's the whole point of this mission. That's right. So that group has finished movement. And then over here, I guess. That's right. So we've got the debutante. He's yep. going to go straight up here. Going to run. Oh wait, that's difficult ground. So it's going to count as two inches. That's right. To go through. So that's minus two inches to go through right the barbed wire. And that means they can run ten inches instead of their full distance. And the witch as well. And ten inches for this witch too. Now you're going to try and stay out of line. Well, there's no shooting this base, so we'll uh, d get right into the combat over here. So it's the Grey Knight, uh, Eltios, with his Nemesis Force Sword. 
versus the uh, looks like your team leader and one blood bride. So you have a full sword on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I am gonna at the beginning of the fight phase. I am gonna use his psychic powers. Yeah. And so I need to ro make a leadership test on him. He's leadership eight. Uh, he's gonna be using hammer hand. And so he gets a six, so it goes off. D3. It does D3 wounds if I actually do okay. end up wounding you. Okay. So starting with this round of combat, uh, you do have your Blood Bride. I, my Blood Bride, uh, because I'm outnumbering you, yep. I get to choose uh, who fights first. Okay. So the first thing that's going to happen is my Blood Bride is going to try and fight you. Okay. She has a special piece of gear, the Shard Net and the Impaler. So she's going to try and ensnare you with her net. All right. So she needs to take an initiative test. Oh. oh. Die down, die down. Oh, oh goodness, that's two that's dice. two for two. And, and she six. fails. All right. right? That's good so for that me. So that means that you don't, if, if she would have passed, it meant you could only fight with a combat knife. That's right. This turn, because she would ensnare your other weapons. That's right. And so what is her uh, weapon skill? So she's weapon skill four. Okay, same as me. Okay, she has a two base attacks. Okay, and I have one. <laughs> Okay. One dice, and so. she does have two weapons. So her okay. shard net and pay the counters to weapons, which okay. adds another dice. Awesome. So okay. here's my roll. roll. I get a one. You fumbled. I fumbled. That's, That's terrible. That's not good. That's not good That's at all. That's not very good at all. No. So I rolled a four. Yeah. Okay. No fumbles, but your fumble adds, adds plus one. one. That's right. I charged. So you get another one. Plus one. Um, you and the outnumbering doesn't give me any bonuses right not now. Not yet. Not until um, the next combat. You are equipped with a heavy weapon, which adds another plus one for me. A special weapon, sorry. Special weapon. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, Even though I'm fighting with a regular uh, hand. Yeah, weapon. if you have yep. it on you, because okay. you're like in combat. Yep. Time. Yep. And then you subtract your one. Yeah. So I win by <laughs> six. Six. The six attacks. So I get six hits on you. Yep. Then you got a wound. And my shard net and impaler. Um, just let me yep. find. So. Scary here needs forced to wound the Grey Knight with the, uh, what is the net called Shard again? Net Shard Net. And uh, the Impaler. And the Impaler. Oh, the yeah. Impaler. <laughs> He's getting impaled. going to try and impale you. Needing four to wound. Four. And so and that's a lot. Do three wounds. Okay. And a minus two save modifier. Awesome. So I need a five or a six here. To and save. Let's see if I can get three saves. Ah, uh, two, two go, through. go through. That's not good. So, Let's see on a two happens. plus, he is taking it of action. That's right, because he's by himself. And, and he is taking it of action. He is out of action. That's so, up on him. this is the... See on a the, one or two, yep. the alarm is sounded. There's a five, so it's not sounded as of yet. Okay. That's not good That's for not me. Good LTOs is out of action. And to move to those it. two there just did a two inch follow up move which happens after you defeat or take out an enemy in combat. So they just moved up closer to the objective over there. At the beginning of my movement phase, these guys are not aware of the uh, Dark Eldar and the Witch Cult, uh, or the Cult of the Bloody Blades. Bloody Blade. uh, and so Kelda is here, uh, what I have to do for him to make him move is I have to roll a d6, minus three, and that's how many inches that he can move. If, if I roll a negative, Skari actually gets to move him wherever he wants. So let's see what I get. So I get a six, so that's three inches for him. So he is just going to move over this way, over to the railing and look down there for the beginning of the next round because I could potentially You'll spot, spot them automatically them. because so. they're, they're not in cover. Oh, that's so true. next turn, you're going to be able to spot them that's automatically. That's good. And then just to cut in this year, he gets to roll, move two nice. inches, so he's just going to move up to this Promethean pipe right like so. Beginning of round two for the Cult of the Bloody Blades. The alarm has been sound as... Could you roll a d6 times yep, four, four? To see if I spot. In that many inches and because you have... Yeah, yeah. so I would roll eight, eight inches. inches. I definitely have Caldez within eight inches of and here as well. all those guys. Yeah, so about, yeah, so he's within eight down yep. here. Yep. They're out in the open, automatically sounds the alarm. So now they're aware of me. And so now we'll go into the Cult of the Bloody Blades movement. And Rid Scary. That's okay, you can take <laughs> Sorry, Rid Man. <laughs> yeah. I was just yeah, <laughs> being safe. It, right? It's yeah. a habit, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so first things first, um, I'm gonna do some charges here because I have okay. to try and like knock you out and then get away. That's right. Because it's not just a hit, I have to hit and run off the board. Yeah, and, and movement is done very specifically. You have to do your charges, then you have to do your compulsory, exactly. and then your regular moves after that. So, so. I'm going to do a, a series of charges here. This um, witch here yep. is going to uh, do a charge. Into now, because I'm going through da difficult ground, it adds an, uh, sorry, it takes, it's an inch distance, so yep. it's going to double it. So yep. I can only charge 
12? 10 inches. 10, sorry. In total. 10. Yep. So she's going to go here. Because this is less than about an inch apart and an inch high, it doesn't affect movement at all. Nope. And now she's on higher ground as well and fighting. Which it makes a difference as well. It exactly. gives you plus one to that. Exactly. And then she's going to do the same. Okay. And she needs to try and make it into base to base here. Okay. So she goes down this way like this, over because it doesn't impede movement, and she and just jumps across. So those two are tying up that just to her. Okay. And Next over here. We'll do this one here. All right. So I can't physically charge because I'm not within six inches to sense him. Yep. And they don't have line of sight up this way at such a sharp angle. Okay. So I'm gonna use their movement. They're gonna move up six inches, which Sounds is good. up the ladder, which is fine here. Okay. And then this girl is gonna move six inches up. The ladder as well. As well. Okay, and then I've got my debutante. Yep. Who is, oh shoot, well, technically I would have charged them in here. Yeah. Yeah, because. So theoretically, she'll be up here yeah, with so the. That's there, and I believe the with debutante the leader as well. can make it yep. as well. So they're both on the objective. That should have been done first, but again, it's. I just did it for getting, editing purposes. That's right. We're just having fun. And uh, so those two did charge over there. So. We'll come back with the shoot phase next for the witches. Okay. These two witches here, they're going to be taking their splinter pistol shots into Brother Caldez up there. So they need what to hit? So it's a three plus. Okay. I'm going to start with her, although she's okay. shooting through her friend. Yep. So it's going to provide a partial cover. Okay. So it's a minus one. She needs a four to hit. Okay. That's a miss with a two. Yep. And it's only with a two. If it was a one, it might, might hit her hit friend. <laughs> with straight fire, which is yeah. awesome. And, and the, the one at the front. Uh, needs a three plus. Yep. And hits. She hits. Okay. That's going to pin him down. Okay. And I wound on a four plus because of the splinter pistol. Yep. And, and, and it, it is a wound. wound. Is there an armor save value to it that? It is a minus two to your save. All right. So five plus. I get a six. Ooh, and so is okay. he is there, but he is pinned. That's right. So he goes on his back like so. So we're gonna start combats next after the shoot phase. So uh, we're gonna do the ones on the objective. So you have the leader as well as one of your regular witches, or no, uh, one of debutantes. your debutantes. Yes. All right. So, so the debutante just gets two attacks. I'm gonna start with her because she's okay. outnumbering the structure or whatever. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, they automatically hit. Yep. And it's toughness six. So you need sixes so to win. So I need win. sixes to win it. And there's nothing with no a two and a three. Okay. And then your and then leader. my leader. Um, uh, she has one Next is going to be the leader, and she has three attacks, he said. Plus one for two plus combat weapons. Yep. And because you're outnumbered, she gets an additional one. All right. Because it would still count as a, uh, the same as against the fighter. Yep. Okay, so we're needing sixes to wound. All right. Essentially. And I one see wound. one six. Okay. So that is That's two important. wounds remaining on that structure there. It's the power sword. Oh, it's D3. D3. Never mind. Yeah. Ooh, that's so not good. So she's smacking it with a power sword. Wow. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. She and has so two wounds. So it only has one wound remaining. That's right. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that is only one damage. Uh, power swords don't get the D3, so it is only oh, it one damage. An and there's two <laughs> an amazing power sword. <laughs> so that still does have two wounds remaining. So we'll come back with the Justice Card Combat next. So over here, we're going to do the Chardonnay and Paler. I'm going to start with the, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with her. Okay. She needs to take an initiative test to try and stop your Justice Card from fighting with, with uh, any weapons. Nemesis yeah. Albert or whatever. And, and there's a bosses. one, so he can only fight with his regular weapon this turn. Just a knife. Perfect. And so who are you starting with for this phase? The, well, the Blood Bride started. The Blood Bride, she, yeah. She, she's, uh, so she's got two base attacks. I have two as well. And she gets one for two plus combo weapons. All right. Okay. So here's my roll. I got a five. And a fumble. And a fumble, that's true. Okay. And my girl. Oh, she did a, a critical. So, oh. Two hits is a critical. So that's I mean, two sixes. Good. Yeah. So I get a six. Wow, so we'll come back with the total values. Yeah. So the totals here, I have a 9 in total for my roll, so it's basically I rolled my 5 plus my weapon skill. Skari here, he with his Blood Bride, she has a total of 12, so she rolled a 6, then she rolled another 6 in that roll as well, so that's a critical, so that gives her plus 1, so that puts her up to a 7. She then uh, also has you Charge, uh, which puts her up to an 8. I Fumbled, puts her up to a 9, and then you get your Obstacle, obstacle which is minus 1 because she charged over the and Promethean Pipe, and then her Weapon Skill is added in there from 8, taking it up to a 12. So the difference is 3, so she has 3 attacks going up against my Justicar, so she needs... Strength 4. 4s so to wound. So she needs 4s to wound you. Okay. And she does so one wound. wound. Okay, and, and that so is at a minus two to your six. Okay, so I'm going to use my invulnerable save Four from uh, yep. from uh, step aside. 
And so, no, he does take a wound. He goes down. That so is let's not see good. what happens. That's not good. And, and then he's out of he's action. out. Oh no. So that's dangerous. So the beginning of the uh, second turn for the Grey Knights. I only have one guy left. I also only have Brother Caldez. So what he's going to do is he's going to choose to uh, fail the bottle test because there's no sense in him trying to take on everybody down here and uh, survive. So we'll come back with the after game uh, stuff that we have to take care of. So they're like the recruitment, resupplying, stuff like that. So, uh, because these both of these guys were taken out of action, uh, during the first part of the re rewards of battle, we have to recover injured warriors. Uh, so, normally if these guys were just down, I'd have to roll a d6 and one to three, they are taken out of action. Four to six, they're fine. Uh, but these guys are already out of action, so it's a serious injury table, so I need a d6 roll. So I'll do just card first. He gets a five, so he's full recovery. Excellent, that's oh. what I like. <laughs> and then uh, brother Altios, he needs a good roll like that as well. So he gets a three, so painful he hit recovery. painful recovery. So uh, he's basically hatred. hatred versus whoever took him out, which was the Blood Bride. Mm -hmm. And so he has hatred, blood, blood Bride, and then he has to sit out next game. That isn't good for me. Two models, oh. woohoo! <laughs> Okay. So the next step in the rewards battle is clean Prometheum, uh, so automatically losing a gain one, uh, but I also have to give up one uh, to uh, Scari due to the fact that uh, I you decided to bottle. To. Yeah. And so uh, that was just to save my one remaining model left, so I basically stay at three Prometheum with this guy. So after that is advanced. So I have my one guy that survived, so I'm gonna actually give it to him. Mm -hmm. And I gotta roll in the chart to see if what happens to him, so 2d6. I got a 5, which is a skill, so it's going to be shooting. <laughs> and so I roll 2d6, and I get to pick one of those two skills. So a 1 and a 6. So 6, Ammo Hound, I get to reroll uh, all ammo rolls, or Crack Shot. So when you roll for a shooting attack made by this fighter, you can reroll the dice. Know that this only happens. Uh, so you can reroll the injury dice against yeah, the enemy. Yeah, so he's going to take Crack Shot. So he Ooh. has crack shot and can re-roll his injury rolls against enemies if he puts them out of action. Woohoo! So what I did is I used a Prometheum cash, so I left myself with two, to uh, hire this brother here. I haven't named him yet, but I'll think of that somehow. Uh, then I had, so he's 175 points and I had 25 points left. I gave him frag grenades, so both these guys have frag grenades. And what I did to give him his Nemesis Force Sword is I actually took it from uh, Brother Eltios here and added it on to him. So that way he only has a side cannon and he only has a side cannon too. But he's sitting out next match anyways. And that is that for my promotions with my Grey Knight Strike Team Regalis. And Scurry, what are you doing for your okay? So after so all after that math, stuff, um, I first have to try and injure, recover in fighters. But you all my none. guys were yep. stood standing. And your two guys at the back there come back next mission. Next too. mission, they're they're available to be part of the roster. One of them's frenzied. One of them hates uh, your Justica. Yep. Um, so that's going to be great. Then I'm going to roll for um, I'm going to roll for some advancement. I believe is the next step. Um, we've been since we've been doing this. It's great. Yeah. Fun. Yep. So uh, claim Promethean. So yep. I get D three for winning. Yeah. So D three. So you get three, and I have one for one. So that's four that you got this one. Plus Correct. you had one last time, which is five. Yeah. So you all of a sudden are uh, ahead of me with with the Promethean. Drastically. That, that one mission was really. It's fun to see the different styles of missions and how each mission will kind of help a kill team That's depending right. on what it is so That's it's right. good to have a, a varied kill team yep. um, to kind of be able to play the different missions during a campaign absolutely um, okay so then we're going to go to advance so I get to pick a um, a fighter I'm going to pick my blood, blood bride, bride. he did really did well really this game. well this Very game good. Well. I'm going to roll 2d6 to see what it is that happens to her yep so she gets a skill. Six, which is a skill. And so I'm five to nine is a skill if you guys are curious correct. watching. So. Um, and we'll be back because I'm not sure what skill tree right. she can roll on. So the Blood Bride here, uh, Ridvan, is going to be choosing to do agility. Agility. Rolling on a skill okay. chart for agility. So, so he rolls roll. 2d6. And four and two. So he has the option of dodge and great leap. So dodge is a six plus in realm save against shooting. Which is really good. Which I'm totally going to get. You're going to take dodge? That's it. All right, Blood Bride <laughs> has dodge. Okay. All right. 
So, Scary here for his resupply action. Instead of buying any gear, he's actually uh, adding a, a second Blood Bride That's in right. here. So next mission, which you'll see over on his channel, we'll, he'll have the second Blood Bride, as well as his two uh, models back there that are returning for the next match. So the two Blood Brides oh, um, scary. coming in. Oh yes, buddy. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pistol off of the debutante that has hatred. Yeah. And I'm essentially putting the pistol, the pistol on, on her, her so she has a weapon. That makes sense. Okay. All right, we'll come back with the after action report next. Okay. That's okay, it's all good. <laughs> Welcome guys to the After Action Report. You saw the matchup between Strike Team Regalis and the Cult of the Bloody Blades. That's right, and they was, got bloody. They got very bloody <laughs> and very, very fast. Bloody, yeah, like two, two turns? Something like that. Something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was two turns because yeah. I, I went out on the second because I'm like, no, there's no, like done, no yeah. sense. No <laughs> sense. I'll save one of my guys. Yeah. One. <laughs> and sure yeah. enough, I upgraded his skill. So what was your thoughts yeah. on the match? Uh, it was interesting to see just a different style of play. Yes. Um, you know, being able to just kind of ambush you. Yeah. Um, so even though my army in a one-off fight is mismatched because you can set up perimeter yep. and shoot, yep. um, you know, against you, this was like you, I caught you unawares. Absolutely. And, and my close combat special. And you slit the throat. And just yeah, and just, it was good. It was, in, it was intense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And see, I felt like I did pretty much nothing that game. Like, cause I didn't, yeah, right? I didn't. Yeah. So it was just quick. It was like yeah. a lightning strike. Yeah, that, which is great for but, campaign games. Absolutely, and that's and that's what I was gonna say. Is like for the campaign. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> for, for the campaign, what's happening is, uh, you know, it, it, it does sort of play into that narrative that we have going because it, it, it really did tie in very well. And uh, I was hoping that my Justicar was going to survive. We, you know, he has that four up, uh, what is it, step aside, I believe the yeah, skill is yeah, called. No, it, I rolled the he three. He could have, yeah. Like really good, it's better than the saves. That's so. right, especially with the modifier. Snared him with that net and yep. impaled him good. Yeah, it was good. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, check out the third match in our campaign in, uh, on ScarCast's uh, right. YouTube channel. I'll have the links below. And uh, please remember, also, if you like the content that we have here on Blackfire Productions, jump onto Patreon and uh, lend us your support. Help Thanks. out as much as you can, guys. Yeah. It's always what, what we need to create more content. Like Absolutely. This. Remember, until next time, ignite your hobby. Oh my goodness, I almost stole somebody oh else's goodness. line. Ignite <laughs> your hobby. There you go. <laughs>